Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine and Serious Business. This is episode 92. Um, we're going to go over some of our favorites from Memorial Day tasting weekend. Yeah. Uh, you saw last week we posted our friend Bo was up visiting, so we went out tasting Saturday, and then I went out with some other friends on Sunday. And over the course of the weekend, we got into some good stuff. Again, these are all some wines that we pretty much picked up to drink for ourselves. Yeah. And we have a lot of fun <laughs> sharing those wines with you guys. So yeah. we're like, yeah, let's just do another show. People these are all know. worthy of it. I mean, yeah. Fantastic wines. That was that was a fun weekend. Yeah. So what do we got here? So uh, the first one, the one that I brought was the Scott Paul Merceau, two thousand nine, and tasted this out at Scott Paul and was just very very happy with it. So figure I'd share. And where'd you taste these at? Where'd you um, tasted the yeah the uh, Biggio Hamina. Um, tasted at the winery in McMinnville. There they got a restaurant set up. We'll talk more more about that when we get into it. And this is at Canis Feast yep. in Carlton. They invite us out to uh, go through their Memorial Day lineup. And it was it was delicious, and this was I think our favorite of the lineup. I mean, I was, it was my favorite. Yep, it was totally my yeah. favorite. As far as for drinking right now, I think that's it's spot yeah, on. So, absolutely uh, delicious. I'm gonna go for a little bit of rinse. We were checking out, making sure they weren't corked or anything. Yeah. yeah, been burned by that we'll before. Yeah, yeah. Going before you get going. What you, you were Chaz was reading a little bit about this. I don't know as much. Yeah, so so I was really excited to taste this. Well, I've I've been a fan of Scott Paul's uh, program for a while, and. Watched you know him import Burgundies and then when in 2008 when he made a uh, Scott Paul uh, Burgundy was pretty stoked about that and then this is his first time he's done a white wine um, he went over to Burgundy and I'm not really sure what too keen on the specifics on the internet it's he he produced it through another uh, winery um, how much force or how much you know hands how hands on he was with it I'm not entirely sure but um, it has to be pretty damn good for someone who makes really good wine in Oregon and imports a lot of high-end Burgundy to bring in a Burgundy wine under their own label. Mm -hmm. and that's why I was really excited about it. I love white Burgundy. The Mercellas I have had, I've been really excited about. And so when the chance came to get at this, uh, we went tasting there. Fortunately, had it open. It was amazing. And we'll see how it is today. So. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. really nice on the nose. You're just yeah. getting like these like really ripe green apples. It's not like the super underripe, like really tangy, zippy green apples. Just like round, full little bit of Asian pear on there too. A little bit of Asian pear. And one thing I got out of this before, and I get a little bit out of it again, is the kiwi fruit sort of oh, flavor nice. too. Like a really, oh, yeah. really like a, a sweet, a sweet greenness. So it's not a melon. It's it's not an apple, but it's like sort of reminds you of kiwi or lychee or something like that. It's, yeah, it's got like a good rich feel on the nose even. Yeah, and you can yeah, you can tell there's a little bit of oak on it, very, very minor amount. But man, just like very bright, lots of acidity coming through on the nose. It, it smells awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it smells good. So clean on the palate. It's really great, man. The flavors evolve slowly. Yeah. Really delicious. The way that this sort of, the way that this approaches the palate and mm -hmm. even once it's swallowed, there's a lot of flavor and a lot of interaction still going on, excuse me, in the mouth. You can tell, I mean, the acidity uh, really, really whacks the tongue hard right now. The acidity is full on mm -hmm. in a very good way, though. I mean, I wouldn't call this an imbalanced wine, but the integration between the flavors and the acidity is full, is perfect. Um, it's yeah. got this long, slow evolution on the acidity, like yeah. it kind of sets in on the mid palate and then later it's really drying things out fully. Which, which I like, right? Like, I like the good full acidity. Those nice apple flavors are making a great appearance. This is just like the perfectly ripe apple yep. right in the mid palate. It lingers gently out on the finish. Yep. It's really like some tartness from like a Granny Smith apple. A little bit of that. Again, with a little bit of the kiwi sort of lychee thing. Um, but then with the richness, sort of nuttiness on the sides from the, the, oh, oak, the yeah. oak usage and, uh, you know, the acidity, man, the acidity is killer on this. It's it's awesome. It's and the good. oak's so moderately used. Like, I even talked to him about this when we were out there. Like, most of them are so that, that I've had, which isn't many, um, have had a really strong presence of oak to it. And I thought mm -hmm. that that was more typical of the region. And in some discussion with him, he's like, no, not, not that's not always the case. And, and uh, obviously, he made a point of, you know, not making his wine that right. really uh, super, super oaky style. No, no, I... I want to say they said something about using almost all neutral oak or something, but I can't remember. It was kind of a daze while we were out there, right? You've been drinking yeah. all day. And, um, but yeah, so so get back at us if you watch the show, Scott, and uh, let us know the specifics on this wine. But I absolutely love it. Um, 92 points. 
It's delicious. No question. And 90 plus for me. So, solid stuff. Yep. Like I said, good fruit, good structure. Ageability is totally there. Mm -hmm. Delicious stuff. And, and another exciting thing about it is that like this is one of those personal passion projects too, right? Like, right. even talking to him, you can tell he's been excited to do this for a long time. It's great when the dreams become reality and they turn out well. So yeah, absolutely. Check this out if you if you get the chance. Yeah, good job, Scott. So on to wine number two. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, my pick. Actually, later in the day, Chaz uh, Chaz had to go home, um, but I hit a couple more stops. And uh, Biggio Hamina is a producer that we've known for quite a while. Cool like, dude. We met Love we met uh, Todd when when he was making wine out at Adia mm -hmm. in the tasting room there. Always one of the most pleasant guys to talk to. Super yeah. friendly. Super fun. Now he's got his own tasting room in McMinnville with a restaurant attached where his wife, like a real experienced chef, does food to go with the wines. So wow. I had a really good time. And this is awesome. the, the 2009 Zenith bottling from him. Um, and he does a, a number of single vineyards usually. And a point I want to make about this is interesting. I was down at the locker last night looking for stuff to drink, yeah. and I pulled out the 2008 Zenith. So now I'm really confident Ooh. in saying that he consistently does this vineyard to my style. This okay. is probably my favorite yeah. of his single vineyard bottlings. Point. But some another point about that is like if I like this the best and it stands out repeatedly, that probably means that the other vineyards are really consistent expressions of that style too. So as you taste through his wines, pay attention to that. He really brings out some vineyard character. Nice, nice. I haven't tasted with him enough to get that yet, but um, for many times his, his his single vineyard program is always spot on. Yeah. Great wines from him, so we were talking about this when we tried it. This you you could you could pick this out as Oregon Pinot Noir. I think in a lineup of a hundred yep. wines, like yep. you got a little bit of that Oregon funk, right? A little bit of that forest floor going on there. The funk. Some dark yeah. cherries. <laughs> yep. Yeah, old old cherries. Like these are cherries that you know they, they sat on the shelf at the the supermarket a little too long. Yep. Started to curl up a little bit. Got you a little bit of a discount stick, on them, maybe. Yeah, stick your nose in it. Yeah, stick your nose in the bag, and you're like. Yeah. The oak's in there again, but in the background, right? It's in that forest floor thing going on. Mm -hmm. Mixed already really well with the fruit. A little bit of floral note, too. A little bit of bright red fruit in there, too. Just a little like a sort of a strawberry play. But oh, yeah. Behind. I mean, there is some. Yeah. It's not like old, heavy, dark fruit. Like, there are some nice red characteristics to the nose that keep it kind of fresh and fun. So. Clean, bright. It's got a real freshness to it. The acidity on this is so nice. I'm getting That's dark delicious. cherry fruits right on the front of the palate, then run along the sides and linger for a good length of time. Strawberries you were talking about. Yeah. I like that a little bit too. Man, this lingers a long time. Even like a little bit of greenness from the stem too. Just a, yeah. just a little bit, but like in a good way. Like you just took a strawberry hole with the leaves and stem on it and jammed it in your mouth. I bet he'll see this. That'll be a yeah. good comment for you, Todd, if, if, if you do get a chance to see it. How much whole cluster, if any, do you use on this? Right? Maybe we, a little we'd bit. We'd be curious to know. Mm. Yeah, the cherries, the dark cherries are right there, full on. A little bit of like a damp, earthy component. Oh, um, nice. Yes. And then the, the red fruit and really, really easy tannins on this. The tannins mm -hmm. are just, they're there, but just barely sort of start to dry the mouth out very very slowly the acidity is like full on right down the tongue um and man the finish goes on a long time delicious wine i'd say really the good. structure is definitely acid dominated I, I agree with that yeah and it's a really good bright acidity mm -hmm. that like i said it's full but it's got a nice light feel to it, it keeps things lively yeah and along with those brighter red fruits i'm getting a little bit of like roses on the back Ooh, end too just yeah. like kind of a gentle floral note that uh still has a good touch to it and, you know, super approachable right now. I agree. Components, I think, yeah. contribute well to age this out for a few years, too. Solid stuff. Uh, 90 plus. Yeah, I'm going to go 91 points ah, on yeah, it. Actually, yeah, actually. I'm going to step it up. 91. That's delicious. That's yep. Good pick, man. That's that's really good wine. No question. So Absolutely delicious. Very fun. Easy to drink now. Yeah. We'll probably benefit from another year in bottle to, like, sort of mellow out the acidity, mellow out a little bit more. But, man, just... Awesome. Especially like stuff, if you're just man. grabbing something to eat with dinner that night or something like that. What's like, the price point on this? Uh, 40 I okay. think. Something yep. like that. So right in line. Yeah. Yep. Delivers. All right. Solid. Wine number three. This is yep. Canis Feast. Um, we uh, got an invitation from Tamara, who does publicity out there. Yep. Really generous of her. Come out. 
run through the Memorial Day lineup. That um, was awesome. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, totally. That was a super good time. And, and you know, while it takes me forever to get written tasting notes up, I'm like, we all really like this. And I'm like, let's put it on a show. Let's talk yeah. about it right now because it's available. They've got it at the winery. And it's, and it's delicious. Yep. Um, absolutely. They do some interesting stuff at Cannes Feast. You know, most people around here do burgundy vari varieties. And uh, this, they do warmer climate stuff. So stuff from Southern Oregon, stuff from the Columbia Gorge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where this is from, right? Yeah, yep. Columbia Valley AVA. But located right, right in Carleton. Really cool winery right next to Carleton Winemaker Studio. Good stop if you're ever in Carleton. Yep. They got a, got a chef there. Solid food, right? Yeah, food, really food delicious. good food, man. Yep. So. I don't know what that was. That a club thing that we went to, or uh, no? It was just a Memorial Day Memorial Day event. event, I think. Yeah, yeah. that was so. that was a lot of fun. So if you get, get <clears throat> excuse me, can get in on that ticket, man. And and nice for a change of pace. So I was out with some friends a, uh, a couple weeks ago that were like, "Ah, oh, Pinot Noir. I really like bigger style wines. If you got one person like that in your car, you'll make their day. Stop True. there. A little bit of a change of pace. Something interesting. Mm -hmm. Solid stuff." That smells nice. <laughs> Man, this has opened up, you know, this has been open, what, maybe like 20 minutes or something like that, yeah. and it's been evolving already. It's definitely got more richness to it. I'm getting dark cherries, and in some ways, like, there's some things that remind me of Pinot Noir here, because I'm yeah. getting a little bit of that woody forest floor character. A little, yeah, a cherries. little bit of, like, a dirtiness. Um, there's, a, there's a definite plumminess to it. Nice. You know, like, like, but like fresh plum, and... I mean, like a little bit of barbecue sauce. Not like you yeah, slathered the whole thing, but like you left a little bit on the counter, a little savory note. Yeah, yeah, I would completely agree. There is a savoriness to the nose on this. It's it's really kind of kind of nice. I think what we picked out about it originally, there's there's something really interesting about this wine that's actually that they're doing really really well. Yeah, I think a lot of American nice. like Sangiovese and other Italian varieties are pretty simple, but even on the nose, you can tell there's complexity here. There's almost like. It reminds me, maybe it's just because I've been cooking one up, but like cooked green pepper. I don't know. There's like a very light note of it. I, mm. I, I don't know. Which I don't know as well. Yeah. 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 The, the, the nose you can sit here and smell because it's delicious and it, you kind of sort of keep wondering what, what you're smelling. And, good complexity. I mean, yeah, good complexity. And here's where you can tell this is definitely a bigger style, right? Mm. The tannins come into play. Immediately. Right on the mid palate, they're full, dry things out well. Those cherry flavors from the nose definitely make an appearance. Mm -hmm. They sit really nicely in the center of the palate, I think. We got some tartness from like a cranberry sort of flavor. Totally. <clears throat> um, but very, very bright red fruit we're talking about here. It's sort of entering a tart phase once you get into the finish, pairing with the acidity that's left over on the palate. Tannins are full on, like he said, uh, medium strength tannins. They don't mm -hmm. grip too hard. This isn't like a, a big Cabernet or something that will just you know, totally dry out the, your cheeks. Um, so, so, but yeah, on its own, man, drinking, drinking pretty nicely. A little bit of spice on there, I think. I'm getting like a little bit of cloves. One thing mm. that I really like is that the cherries pop up in the back of the palate while the while the tannins are really doing their thing, while the acidity, while all that structure is really drying you out. The fruit sits on the palate, and that's one of the things that really stood out to me when I decided yeah. to take some home. Right, delicious red fruit going on in this, yeah. And what also really st stuck with me, like, I'm going to have to pick up more of this because I popped one at a party that weekend. I'm popping this one right now, and I've <laughs> only got one bottle left. And one of the reasons I picked this up is I think this is going to age incredibly because yeah. the fruit is delicious, it's got persistence, and the structure's enormous right now. And, but very nice. Like, right. Like, good feel. The tannins are not overwhelming. The acidity is... It's like delicious and sweet, along with the red fruit. Yeah, it could be a. And I can really just see it as that stuff age. starts to come down, and maybe a little bit of that aged fruit characteristics, just a touch of brown sugar yeah. in there with it, or something like that. Like, like really, I'm I'm pretty confident at that. Like ten years out, I'd Good be really point. interested to see what this Good tastes point. like. So, yeah. solid stuff. I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it ninety even right now, and uh, like I said, really looking forward to the future of it as well. Solid stuff. Yeah, ninety plus for me. Like this is this is delicious. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. I think, I think I already talked. I think we already talked in full about it. Like this is this is really fun, San Giovese. And if you're in the area, check it out. So yeah. So another another fun show, picking wines we like. Easy to yeah, do. Easy show. Easy question of the day too. Even if you don't live in the area, if you're watching this show, I'd bet a lot of money that you were drinking something on Memorial Day weekend. What did you drink on Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, great one. 
See you later. I was drinking that myself. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>